Being in Oxford, the Oxford itself a name, you know, it resonates. Education, you know, and it's known, very known even to my community. Oxford dictionaries, Oxford press. I think it reminds me of the dreams that I had. It reminds me of what I wish for my kids and other young people. I'm here to attend and speak in the School World Forum on social entrepreneurship. And uh, I am going to share the experiences and the style of a leader. Thank you. Uh, Lydia Wilbard from CampFed, the Campaign for Female Education. Vera Cordero, founder of Sauje Crianza, Brazil Child Health. <laughs> Gro Harlem Brundtland, former head of the WHO, former Prime Minister of Norway. and Mary Robinson, former President of Ireland and former United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights. What a panel. Education means a lot to me. And I would, I would guess it means a lot to everyone. It takes me to the table where decisions are made. Having an opportunity to speak in this big forum and seeing other areas and other people that a school foundation supports, and I think it's, it's really great. I wanted to tell a story um, of a girl who lost a mother when she was 10 years old. And because she understood that the father is not going to be able to provide, because as you go up, the cost of education becomes higher. So she opted to go to a fishing camp where she's going to work for an auntie who has business of fishing. After some time helping, worked very hard with a hope that an auntie is going to provide for education by the time she's going to school. The aunt comes with an excuse, accusing that this girl has stealed the money. So the money is missing. So imagine in a moment that uh, with all the hope that she had, it was relying on this auntie. And now it turns out that she's being accused of the money. What would you think this girl would do? Stop there? No. <laughs> <laughs> and that girl is me. As a leader, saving the same girls with the same background that I went through, it is shaping much of my leadership because I, I, I understand what these girls are going through. I have been there. I have this responsibility of making sure that um, I, I act as an example that people that look at me, that I share the stories, they are able to acquire what I aspire. The culture of listening, the culture of sharing with the stories, the, the culture that I also acquire from the people that I see leading. So as a director of Comfort Tanzania, and as a, as a vision that Comfort International and the other African countries have, is to be able to go beyond what we see, ask why, and be accountable, accountable to the girls. The vision for Comfort Tanzania is a vision which is shared across the countries where Comfort is working. And this is where a world where every girl, every child actually, every child is educated, protected, valued, uh, listened and grows to tie the tide of poverty. It's economic independence because I, I think we have seen, you, you, you have seen me, right? <laughs> Will my children need support from Comfort? No. No, I can take my child to school, right? My greatest pleasure is, you know, seeing the smiles of the girls. You see, because it tells me that, uh, you know, the despair that this girl had, it, it's getting better. There is hope coming in. When I go to Tanzania in five years, in ten years, what will I be able to see because more girls go to school? In five years to come, in 10 years to come, they are going to be able to support their families <coughs> and contribute in the development of the nation itself. Being associated with a, an organization which has a reputation around the world because it touches the lives of people directly. And uh, so being part of that success, that joy, and uh, actually achieving the leadership at a very high level as a director, in Comfort Tanzania. So I think those are 
part of the success through the journey of my life.